All right. 1.30, so it must be time to learn about SEO. If you've seen an SEO book on your table and it hasn't been claimed by someone, they are up for grabs. They're a gift from our next speaker. Uh, Lexi's going to like this one. Tony Robbins said our next speaker is the best SEO in the world. What do we think about that? Celebrity? That's awesome. Alexi approved. Tick. Uh, I might as well say it too. Hey, I, I think he's great. I've been referring people to Stefan Spencer for SEO for years. Uh, I met him at Traffic and Conversions in San Diego one year. Uh, we've remained friends. He's become a member of Silver Circle. I get to speak with him on a regular basis. I've seen the calibre uh, of client he deals with and I've also I've seen behind the scenes like under the hood of what he actually does for clients and like it's it's really next next level uh, beyond my comprehension and I used to run an SEO business. It's like if you want the best of the best of the best of the best for SEO, He's here right now. Welcome up to the stage, Stefan Spencer, all the way from the USA. <laughs> Thank you. Hey, everybody. How you doing? OK, so that was a little weak. I know I expect a lot. I'm from America. Full out participation. I mean, we did talk Tony Robbins just a minute ago, so I want everybody to stand up. Yeah, so what are we doing here? I know we got a little bit of lunch here, so we need to kind of get the energy back moving. So here's what we're going to do. I learned this from my wife who learned it from Nam Yoga. It's a simple breathing exercise, and it is so energizing. You're going to love it. Hopefully, you'll use it every day. I'll first explain it, and then we'll do it together. OK, so what we're going to do, don't do it yet, is you breathe in. <laughs> oh, boy. OK, again, just. Listen and pay attention, and then we'll do it together. OK, so you're going to breathe in. And then we're going to hold it and tap, 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 tap. Right? And then we're going to breathe out. Here we go. Keep holding. Now we're going to breathe in a little more. That's a little surprise. And a little more. You feel a little buzz from that? OK, one more time. A little more. And a little more. Oh, it feels so good. OK, you can sit down. Who feels better from that? Anyone? Isn't that cool? It's a great exercise. What we're going to talk about is how to improve your sales with SEO. Search engine optimization is your secret weapon, and that's what we're going to cover in this hour. I've got three books. You've seen two of them. Let me show you the other, because th I do have three here with me. So this is the big one, 1,000 pages. Listen to how this sounds. <laughs> it's a weapon. It's a literal weapon. 1,000 pages. This one is not technically an SEO book, but there are plenty more to take home, and you won't go overweight in your luggage. This is called Google Power Search, and it's all about how to find anything on Google. Confidential business plans, Forrester Research reports that normally cost thousands of dollars. They're all at your fingertips if you know the right Google queries. I've even found credit card numbers and expiration dates, like files of them, with Google searches. No, it's not in the book. And uh, lastly, social e-commerce is all about how to drive sales through social media. And I didn't bring any of that one, but uh, just this, this one copy. So if somebody really, really wants it, you can wrestle it from me. So those are my three books. And I don't have enough copies for everybody. But I will give everybody a free digital copy of, Go of uh, Google Power Search if you email me, uh, which I'll give you my email at the end of the presentation. So, you know, because that one is now in the second edition, and O'Reilly gave me the rights back so that I could uh, do that, which is pretty darn cool. So that can uh, be widely distributed. The other two books I don't have the rights to. Now, I like to, 
optimize everything, not just websites and rankings, but also optimizing myself. And I think you all can benefit from some optimization strategies for your productivity, your health. You know, biohacking, for example, is optimization. So optimize yourself, not just your rankings. And here's an example of that in action. This was me, believe it or not, 10 years ago. The one that you really wanted, the main permalink page. Not using rel equals no follow to direct page rank flow. God. There are a lot of low value links on your on your blog. Okay, enough. I can't take any more. <laughs> oh my God, right? Can you believe that was me? Yeah. What happened? I went on a fire walk, not a figurative one, but a literal one in my bare feet at a Tony Robbins event called Unleash the Power Within. Isn't that cool? I didn't burn, I didn't even get a blister, and I'm like, if I can do that, I can certainly change my life, I can reboot myself, and I changed my diet, I changed my uh, everything, workout regimen, and I started, oh, oh, I also got LASIK, I got a hair transplant, but the internal changes were actually more significant than the external changes. It was fun going to conferences where I'd speak a lot and they didn't recognize me, and I'd just be hanging around in a big group of people, nobody would know who I was, and then finally I'd say, you know, I'm Stefan Spencer. And they're like, what? <laughs> oh my God. And then they parade me around like, this is Stefan. I mean, can you believe it? That was fun for a while. <laughs> that was fun. But <laughs> thank you. Thank you. I'm here all week. Um, but a firewalk is so much more than a metaphor. It's, it's, it's a reboot. And everybody who goes to Tony Robbins Unleash the Power Within gets to do that firewalk. Thousands and thousands of people. And that was in 2009. And then 2016, I get married to the woman of my dreams, my soulmate, who I met at another Tony Robbins event. And none of that would have been possible if I hadn't taken that risk of taking my shoes and socks off, walking on the 2,000 degree hot coals in my bare feet. Isn't that cool? So you can optimize yourself and not just your rankings. This whole process of my evolution inspired me to launch a podcast called Get Yourself Optimized. It was originally The Optimized Geek, but I rebranded it on James's advice. Thank you, James, because not everybody self-identifies as a geek. I've had Dave Asprey on, the Bulletproof Coffee guy. I've had uh, Dr. Daniel Amen, Change Your Brain, Change Your Life. Uh, it's just amazing, amazing people on that podcast, Byron Katie and so forth. And then I have a more relevant to this audience podcast called Marketing Speak, where I've had Jay Abraham, Dan Kennedy, and Seth Godin on uh, among few, the, you know, some of the greats. So th this presentation isn't just about how to optimize for higher sales, but it's really about every day that goes by, you are leaving money on the table for your competitors to take because you are not optimizing your website. Your website is in fact broken and I'm gonna prove it to you. But don't feel overwhelmed like you have to read a thousand page book because you don't. And by the way, if you do wanna take a copy of this um, and you don't wanna get overwhelmed, start with chapter seven, which is on content marketing and link building. It's, it's a fun chapter, it's not super technically dense and it's a good start. But you don't have to even crack that book open, you just need to think about SEO is something that is core to my business. I can't, for example, not have a phone. I can't like, not just refuse to take phone calls. I need to be able to answer the phone or somebody on the team needs to answer the phone. SEO is as important as a phone line. You do not neglect it. But you can treat it as on a need to know basis. You don't need to become an expert. You just need to hire it out to the right people and get it done. Otherwise, you leave money on the table, you essentially take a big pile of money and you set it on fire every day. So please stop that. You've heard in multiple presentations, frameworks are, are king, they're so important. So I'm gonna give you a framework, and these are the three pillars to SEO. It's content, architecture, and links. Pretty simple. Content, architecture, and links. We're gonna start with the architecture side, the technical stuff, which is, all the technical geekery that serves as the foundation, the foundation of your website and your SEO is so critical if it's a shaky foundation, you're building a house on a shaky foundation and that's not a great idea. 
So what we want to do is make sure that we're optimized and well-suited to rank for whatever keywords we're chasing. And I got some good news for you. I found you some money. It's free money. You just need to get up and you, you basically pick it up off the ground. Okay? So that's the free money. And we're going to start with one of the most simple and straightforward technical elements of SEO there is, and that is title tags. And you might think, title tags, well, surely we've got that right. Nope. Unfortunately, you don't. I, I was able to get a number of your websites incorporated into my presentation. Thank you for those who had uh, volunteered. Uh, you don't know what you're in for yet, but um, <laughs> it's going to be gr it's going to be good fun, and I'll try to be gentle. So here we have uh, this is New Heights Media. Is New Heights Media in the audience? All right. Hello. Um, so uh, do you think? Ranking for the keyword home is pretty important for your business? Yeah. No, no, probably not. So let's optimize the title tag for your most important page, the home page of your website. That's the most important page as far as Google is concerned. It should not be home New Heights Media, but instead some keywords that relate to your business. Makes good sense, right? So you start with the home page, the most important element on that page from an on-page SEO factor uh, point of view is the title tag, and we just work our way down the site tree from the home page to the secondary level pages to the tertiary level pages, and so forth and so on. So the uh, home page, not so powerful with uh, lack of keywords here and just the word home. Then we have blog New Heights Media for the blog home page, and we have uh, for the services page, what, you can do, what we can do for you those are not great keywords. There are no keywords present, in fact. So that's easy. And she's not alone. This is Romance Your Tribe. Where's Romance Your Tribe? Hello. All right. Um, home, Romance Your Tribe. I don't know what you do. Uh, let's try a podcast. Your podcast page, podcast, Romance Your Tribe. How about your books page? I don't know what books you have. How many books do you have? Three, okay. Three books on some topics. Books, Romance Your Tribe. So these are great opportunities to make simple tweaks, incorporate some keywords, like what topics are your books about? Um, online marketing, okay, attract clients, online marketing. These are great keywords. We can, con we can confirm that, test that by actually using some keyword research tools. We'll see what those are in just a little bit. But we can then incorporate those keywords, like online marketing books, Romance Your Tribe would be a much better title, and it takes all of about 30 seconds to go in and tweak that. Pretty simple. Here we have um, focusonforce.com. Who's Focus on Force? Where are you? Yeah. Hey, <laughs> hello. All right, so let's talk about your homepage title tag. It is focusonforce.com. Salesforce blog and resources. Well, um, I'm a little bit confused here because that's not your blog homepage. Your blog homepage has a title tag of just the word blog, which isn't uh, very keyword rich. And then your certification courses page has just certification courses. On, on what topic? I'm guessing salesforce.com? Yeah? So those would be great keywords to incorporate into those title tags. This is low-hanging fruit, folks. Uh, here we have uh, Horky Handbook. Hello. OK, so HorkyHandbook.com. Uh, uh, the home page here is Virtual Assistant Horky Handbook. I would imagine that targeting a more relevant keyword for your exact audience, which would be maybe like Virtual Assistant Training or starting a Virtual Assistant Business, those would be better keywords to target. And uh, let's now talk about meta descriptions. This one is, uh, is this? Romance Your Tribe. Hello again. So these are all blank meta descriptions. And you might think, well, meta descriptions, how important are those? It's a second order activity. It's not as important as titles, not by a long shot. In fact, meta descriptions don't influence your rankings at all. So why would you do it? Why would you spend time on meta descriptions? Because 
you can influence the snippet that's displayed in the Google search listing. And you can get more clicks. Because if it says something like copyright 2019, all rights reserved, that's not very compelling. Whereas if it has a really well thought out value proposition and call to action in the meta description, there's a great opportunity and you can uh, create this uniquely for that particular page and do it on a page by page basis. Again, starting at the home page and working your way down. And all of your top level pages have no meta description, they're blank. Uh, same case here for um, uh, Horky Handbook. Now, let's move on to duplicate content. This is the bane of the technical SEO practitioner's existence. Duplicate content is a real pain. Duplicate content is also related to thin content, and thin content is where Google doesn't see the page to be very useful or uh, content rich, and so you could end up getting uh, what feels like a penalty, but it's more you're getting filtered. Google wants diversity in the search results. If it's showing a lot of the same search listings, what appears to be the same titles and the same uh, snippets over and over again, that's not a great user experience for Google searchers. Google wants to eliminate that as much as possible. If you have a lot of duplicate content, therefore, you will be relegated to the depths of the search results, you'll get randomly chosen maybe one of your pages or a competitor or a syndicating partner who has your same content might be the one who's chosen and everything else is relegated to deep in the search results. So here we have duplicated home pages. This is Horky Handbook again with a, uh, a whole raft of pagination pages, but they're not actual pagination pages. When you click on them, they all lead to the home page. So these are duplicated home pages. You're competing with yourself when you have duplicated home pages, and this happens so often. You'll end up having, for example, www and non-www versions of your home page, and one doesn't redirect to the other, so they both resolve, and they compete with each other. You have HTTPS, and you have non-HTTPS, just HTTP, and they compete with each other. Or you have situations like this. And you can even have entire duplicated websites. Here's an example where uh, this is uh, educate, uh, um, the, property edu, the property education company. These are pages on the propertyedu.wpengine.com site, which is a staging site. Where's the property education company? Hey, all right. How did that happen? Well, if you look at the home page, you start navigating the uh, top nav here under about. I, I moused over the about and then team, and it shows that link leads to that propertyedu.wpengine.com slash team page, not to the propertyeducationcompany.com slash team page. You've just exposed an entire staging site to Googlebot. And then you end up with dozens of pages. And by the way, these pages that are in the index, there's these messages that say, there is no information available about this page, learn why. Have you ever seen search results like that? Yeah? That happens when you have a Google bot disallow uh, directive in your robots.txt file and you tell Googlebot, don't come in here, don't spider these pages. You can still index them, you can still keep them in your index and the results, but just don't have information stored about them. That's not a great outcome. We actually, in many cases, want to no index the page rather than disallow it. That's a little technical nuance. So you want to remove the disallow from your robots.txt file and let Googlebot in to discover there's a meta tag, a meta robots no index. Or better yet, consolidate all these duplicates together with a 301 redirect. All right, so now let's talk about site speed, another core issue for technical SEO. You, most of you have slow loading websites. I hate to break it to you. Yeah, it's true. There are so many fabulous tools that will for free check your site speed and give you advice on what to fix. For example, PageSpeed Insights, that's a free tool from Google. Lighthouse, that's another free tool from Google, that's a Chrome extension. There's also webpagetest.org, 
gtmetrics.com, um, testmysite.thinkwithgoogle.com, that's another Google tool based on uh, uh, web page test. So lots of options for checking your page speed and getting some free tips on how to fix it. This, uh, this example here is um, Romance Your Tribe again. And the scary message that you see there is not good news. It took so long that uh, this tool timed out trying to access your web page. So that's an opportunity. And then I, I checked with a different tool. This is a um, web page test. And you see you got a, a, an F for time to first byte, which is not ideal. And also for uh, caching. But here's the kicker. If you look in that box that I highlighted in red, what is the, t the page load time for the home page? Over a minute, 69 seconds. Nobody's going to wait around for that. What's that meme? Ain't nobody got time for that? You've seen that meme? Yeah, I should have put it into the slides. Um, then you scroll down in this tool and you see the waterfall graph. See, things that load in parallel will, load fa will seem to load faster, and things that load serially on the page, things like CSS files and JS files and images and things, some of it can load in parallel, and some of it takes, uh, it has to complete loading before the next thing can start loading. And the waterfall graph shows where that happens, where things load in parallel and where things load serially. It can be as simple as reordering the order of the JavaScripts and the CSS files that are called in your HTML and you've solved it. This is called critical path rendering. Anyone heard of critical path rendering? Crickets, okay. Wow. It's an opportunity. So here's another, um, another site I'm gonna pick on. This one is easydns.com. Anyone from easydns here? Yeah? Hello, okay. So you're in the business. You need to have a super fast loading website. And look how, how much, of what it's, it's not terrible, but if you look at the percentage of time of the total that the time to first byte takes, it's a huge percentage. So you've got some server performance issues, at least the time that I did the, the check here with web page test. I was gonna ask how you fix that. How you fix it? Well, there are two books that I'd start with. Uh, <laughs> No, no, seriously, there are really two good, great books on, on the topic. I didn't write them, but they're another fellow O'Reilly author. Uh, uh, one is called High Performance Websites, and the other is called uh, Even Faster Websites. They're both published by O'Reilly. The author is Steve Souders, who's kind of a big deal in the page performance or website performance space because he originally was the chief performance engineer at Yahoo. He wrote Y Pulse when he was... Uh, or yeah, the, no, not White Pulse, um, Weislow, that while he was there. And when he got poached by Google and started uh, working at Google, he created the first version of PageSpeed Insights. He's amazing. So you could start with those two books, but you could just hire a page uh, speed kind of performance engineer to come and optimize your, um, your servers. Okay. So this, uh, this is... Internetmarketingstart.com. I'm spending way too much time over on this side. I'm going to come over here. So internetmarketingstart.com. Who's from Internet Marketing Start? Oh, of course, you're way over there. Okay. <laughs> coming back, coming back. Here I come. Okay. Here's the bad news. You're an 8 out of 100 on this tool, which is Google's PageSpeed Insights tool. Definitely an opportunity to improve your performance. And a lot of it has to do with images. Images are often... Uh, mis missed opportunity. They're bloated, they're, they're very heavy, you're not using lazy loading. So this is all advice that you got for free from Google saying start using lazy loading so that images that are not visible on the screen don't load until you start scrolling. And uh, you know, just making your images a lot more efficient and not so heavy that's going to make a big impact. Here we have uh, focus on force with a one. Ooh, one out of 100. Okay, 
So that's an opportunity for sure. And then we have, uh, or, oh, I should have worn my glasses here. New Heights Media, six out of 100. Horky Handbook, 33 out of 100. So we're getting better. But this is still in the red zone. And then I, I use a tool called Screaming Frog, which is a spidering tool, Screaming Frog SEO Spider. It's actually free for up to 500 URLs. If you have a small website with dozens of pages, you could use it totally for free. It's a limited version. It doesn't have all the bells and whistles, but you can accomplish so much just with that free version. It's, it's sacrilege. It's, it's a, like a travesty if you don't download it and run it on your website. And here we can see it's telling us that there are so many pages or so many images that are slow loading because they're really heavy. Some images are six megabytes. Holy cow, that's crazy. And there are images that are multiple megabytes that are used multiple times on various pages of the website. That's free money. Here we're uh, also using Screaming Frog on internetmarketingstart.com. And again, not quite as bad, but over a megabyte for an image is really not great. And uh, there are some images that you're using multiple times, like that one is eight times, 300 and some K. It could probably be a tenth of that, just with uh, optimizing it. Okay, then we have uh, crawling issues are also discoverable with this tool. If you have, for example, uh, 301 redirects in place, and they're, um, you're, you're having it go through a, a hop unnecessarily through a 301 redir redirect. In this case here, it's uh, Horky Handbook, or no, New Heights Media, and uh, what's the issue here? So 301 redirects, oh no, these are 404s. Got 404 errors, and the reason it happened was a lack of a, a slash or an extra slash that sh shouldn't have been there or a lack of quotes. I don't know. I didn't look at the pages themselves, but they're super simple errors that these are not valid URLs and you're linking to them from your own website. So it's probably a 30 second fix to address this. When you're linking to pages that are broken and they're on your own website, it's kind of like the broken windows principle. Who's read the book um, Tipping Point? Yeah, do you remember broken windows? That was uh, New York City, and what they did was um, they, they addressed the graffiti, the broken windows in the neighborhood, the turnstile jumping at the subway station stops, and all the violent crime went away. What do you think Google thinks of your website when you have broken images, broken links, uh, old copyright dates, and uh, like errors, typos, mistakes? on your website, kind of like broken windows in, in the neighborhood, right? So stop it. <laughs> Here we have Horky Handbook, and this is a site-wide issue. You guys went from HTTP to HTTPS, good job for that, and you didn't take that extra step of fixing all the links that point to HTTP on all your various pages. They should be pointing to HTTPS now. So you're forcing every single visitor who's clicking on a link on your site and every bot visit to go through a redirect hop unnecessarily. Simple like uh, search and replace, essentially, across the entire website. All the HTTP links should be switched to HTTPS. Isn't this fun? I just love this stuff. <laughs> Depressing, you guys. Um, OK, so here we have. Uh, the Merrymaker Sisters, where are you guys? Hey, all right. Do you want the program subdomain to be indexed or not? No. Yeah, I don't think so either. <laughs> I'm pretty sure you don't. Yeah, but you do. <laughs> yeah, that's not really what you want to have Google visiting or visitors either. There's a lot of mess in there. This is not great user experience UX and a lot of duplicate stuff in there. It's, and it's all stuff that is on a subdomain you don't even want indexed. So, And then we have uh, New Heights Media. 
This is so fun. I just love, like, <laughs> like really digging into you guys. Okay. Newheightsmedia.com.au. Uh, here we have, um, oh, this is funny. It's Latin. Anyone speak Latin? I, I don't speak Latin either. I'm not even going to attempt to, uh, to pronounce this stuff. These are pages that obviously are not meant to be in Google. They're placeholder pages with lorem ipsum type copy. So those are in there too. And they're all easily discoverable. You just download this tool, Screaming Frog, you install it on your desktop, and you hit go. <laughs> That's pretty much what you do. And you wait for it to finish. Let me give you a quick case study of the power of finding technical issues and addressing them. The case study is numerologist.com. And, and thank you, James, for referring uh, numerologists. Where is, where is Blair? Hey, Blair. All right. So look at that up and to the right graph. Is that awesome or is that awesome? That's organic keywords. And uh, we started working together in 2017, and then it just took off like wildfire. One of the core technical issues that I figured out had to do with their interactive VSL their video sales letter at video.numerologist.com. By the way, if you want to see a mind-blowingly awesome VSL, go to that page. It is incredible. It's so innovative. You give your birth date, and it, it just it tailors the video sales letter to you specifically. It feels like it's talking to you and giving you specifically your future. Really, really cool. But there was a problem, and that was, it was showing up with that message saying, no information known about this page, learn why. Remember that message I showed you earlier? That was on the VSL homepage at video.numerologist.com showing up in Google. It was still ranking on page one, but towards the bottom of page one. Clearly, it would have done better if Google could see the content on that page, but it wasn't because of a robots.txt disallow on the home page, I mean, on, on, on the numerologist.com site. We didn't know where it was coming from. How was this happening? Turns out it was going through a quick redirect hop at ClickBank, so a third party service that they're using, and then back to video.numerologist.com, and it was ClickBank that had a disallow that was blocking the flow of PageRank and blocking Googlebot from accessing the content on video.numerologist.com. So we fixed that. We kind of did a workaround, not going through that redirect anymore. And that, uh, I think you're ranking number three currently for that? Yeah. Number three for numerology. Number three for numerology with that page. That's money. Yeah. And then look at the traffic. This is organic traffic from Google Analytics, up 570% in 12 months. Boom. Mic drop. <laughs> OK, so think about how much you're leaving on the table with your technical SEO issues that you don't even know you have. You know the expression, you don't know what you don't know? So just mull that over for a second. Oh my god, the panic, right? So that's pillar number one, that's architecture. Now we're moving on to links. And how much time we got? Okay, we got plenty of time. So now we're moving on to links. Let's see what's involved here. Links is still a foundation of the Google rankings algorithm. We still need to have amazing, high quality, authoritative, trusted, important links pointing to our site, because that what, that's what makes us look trusted, authoritative, and important. If we don't have links, we are not going to rank. And it's not a numbers game, it's a quality game. I like to think of link building as an investment in your future. It's an asset. Do you remember earlier in the day we were talking about uh, Rich Dad, Poor Dad? Who, uh, whose presentation was that? Allen's. Allen's, yeah. Rich Dad, Poor Dad. And do you remember what the definition of an asset is? Puts money in your pocket every month. That's what link building does. Let's say that you got a link from a high authority site. I got one recently from Harvard Business Review. I got my first article published in Harvard Business Review. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah, thank you. In January, and they linked to my site. That's a high, high authority, high trust link. That's pretty darn amazing. I don't think they're ever going to remove that link. That article is in their repository. It's in their archives. It's there forever. So you have that forever. 
It's very rare that a webmaster or a blogger is going to say, oh yeah, that resource at Horky Handbook uh, that I linked to, I think I'm going to remove that now from that, that article because I don't know why not. No, it's going to stay there. So every month, you could take a, let's say a six-month sabbatical. I actually did that once. I took a six-month sabbatical from my business. My previous company was a big agency. We were in three different countries, and uh, that was Net Concepts. I took a six-month sabbatical. I didn't even check email that whole six months. So imagine you do that for six months, and you're not link building or anything. You just stop everything. You're going to still get traffic, sales, rankings month after month while you're on sabbatical from the links that you built six months earlier, a year earlier, two years earlier. It's free money. So just focus on link building as an asset that you are going to sell with your company, just like you sell your company with an email list, with a retargeting list, with all the other assets that go with the business. This is an asset. And yet you're wasting that asset with wasted links, 404s on your website that have links pointing to them. You might think, no, I'm not doing that. Oh, yes, you are. <laughs> okay, so let's look at this. This is a tool called Ahrefs. And I'm looking at the report best pages by incoming links. I'm looking at uh, the Merrymakers, uh, Merrymaker Sisters, and we're seeing uh, multiple websites linking to pages like uh, the Mary Eats page, the Coming Soon page, the Biz page. These pages don't exist anymore. So what do you do? How do you fix that? Because all of that wonderful link juice that's flowing into your site is black holed. It's evaporated. It doesn't count. It's not helping your site. When you get a link to a particular article or blog post, it's like the rising tide that lifts all boats. Every page of your site will benefit, but not if it's blocked at the very first entry point because it's a 404 error. So you 301 redirect that page that no longer exists. Let's say that you've removed that service offering. Maybe you, that, that post is now elsewhere on your site. You just 301 redirect so that that link flows the page rank, the link equity, over to that new URL. And if it's a discontinued product, that's fine too. Just find the most related, closest product that you can redirect to and send the, the, the juice that way. Or if you don't have a related product, to the category level above it. Here's another example. This is the uh, Horky Handbook again with the freebie page, that's a 404 error with multiple sites linking to it, the eight tips to uh, start a freelance business that also has uh, multiple sites linking to that page that no longer exists. And then you end up having bad links, not just wasted links, but bad links that drag you down. How does that happen? Well, there's this thing called negative SEO. Has, who's heard of negative SEO? Yeah, it's a real thing. Somebody doesn't like you, and they want to sully your reputation in the eyes of Google. Maybe they want to take your rankings away so that they can raise higher in the search results. Maybe they're an affiliate, and they don't want you to rank because they want to rank and make all that money as, as an affiliate, and you're the merchant. There are many reasons why they would want to take pot shots at you, and it works. They hurt your reputation in Google by buying low-quality links. Here's another mind-blowingly evil technique that they use nowadays that's even more effective. They pretend to be you contacting legitimate links, uh, the owners of the sites that are legitimately linking to you that are really nice links, and say, please remove the link. I do not want a link from a spammy site such as yours. And nobody checks. They don't like say, are you really from that company? They say, okay, fine, screw you. I removed the link. How do you stop that? How do you stop that? You, you, well, you don't. <laughs> you watch it, and then when that happens, you have to contact them. But this is an insidious game of cat and mouse where you have to be on top of it watching for people trying to ruin you in front of, and, and, as far as Google's concerned. Yeah, so if you're not tracking it, you don't know that it happened. But if somebody removed a link that was a legitimate link, 
You should be on that. There's so many services out there, tools, that will tell you when you lose links, deleted links, like Majestic, Moz Link Explorer, linkresearchtools.com. There's tons of really great tools that do this. Ahrefs, okay? So those are bad links, and let me give you a quick example. Here we have uh, Romance Your Tribe with a trust flow. This is a tool called Majestic, by the way, majestic.com. Trust flow of five. And the citation flow is a 41. What a huge discrepancy between the two. So this is a situation where the trust is minimum, it's actually quite low, and the importance is quite, well, much higher. It's not super high, but this is, by the way, on a logarithmic scale, like a Richter scale. It's not 41% of the way there in the case of citation flow or importance. It's not 5% of the way there in terms of trust. No, it's way lower than that. A Richter scale, five on, on the Richter scale out of 10 is nothing in comparison to a seven, right? That's how it works, it's logarithmic. So going from a five to a 10 is really easy. Going from uh, a 20 to a 25 is a lot harder. Going from a 40 to a 45 is way, 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 way harder. But this is skewed in the wrong direction. We wanna be more trusted than we are important, not the other way around. Who can you think of that's important but not trusted or trustworthy? Yeah, Donald Trump, exactly. You don't wanna be Donald Trump. Thank you. Uh, yeah, on so many levels, yes. Okay, I'm not gonna get political. We need to check our links. We need to use a tool from linkresearchtools.com called Link Detox. And we need to do it quarterly, at least. This is not your guys' sites. This is a hypothetical example. I didn't wanna like really crush your dreams. So this is a site that I actually know the, the guy who runs it, and he was flabbergasted to find out that he was well into the red zone with his link detox score. What this means is he's toxic. He has so many malware-infected sites linking to him, porn sites, spam sites, sites in really dodgy neighborhoods linking to him that it's dragging down his own reputation. How do you fix this? It's a lot of work. It's not just a 10 minute job of creating a disavow file with those spammy sites and uploading it to Google Search Console. No, Google makes you jump through a lot more hoops in order to let you back in its good graces. You have to show kind of your mea culpa that you're gonna clean up your act. And you might say, well, I didn't do it. It was a competitor. It was some affiliate or somebody. They targeted me with negative SEO. That might be true, but Google treats you as guilty until proven innocent. So you need to show that you're not gonna do that nasty, low quality link building anymore by reaching out to these webmasters of the spammy sites and demanding that they remove the link. It's a lot of work, involves multiple tools, not just link detox. I'd recommend using Pitchbox as well. It's a lot of work and uh, it's necessary if you have that problem and many of you do. I mean, I didn't run link detox on all your sites, but I saw many of your sites had much lower trust than importance, and that caused me concern because that happens a lot when you have toxic links. This, uh, this example here is fo focus on force.com. We have uh, 23 out of 100 in trust flow, 34 citation flow, so not as bad of a skewing towards less trust than importance, but still definitely needing to be addressed. This one is uh, New Heights Media, five out of 100 in trust flow, 14 out of 100 in citation flow, definitely uh, needing to be addressed. Oh, and did you see how many sites this uh, newheightsmedia.com.au has? How many? I'll give you a hint. It's right there in the number three. <laughs> three sites. It's really impossible, really, not just hard, but impossible to rank for anything meaningful if only three sites on the entire internet are willing to link to you. How do you get these freaking amazing links? Well, you have to fish with bait, specifically link bait. It needs to be so remarkable. You got a whole presentation earlier from Alexi about content marketing. You need to do effective content marketing. 
This is an example that doesn't come from me. This is a, uh, a friend in the industry many of you have uh, heard of, but I'm not going to name him because he likes cutting corners. Like he paid a relative to go to school for him to go to college and get the degree in his name. Um, <laughs> what he did with this is he found uh, for his client lifeinsure.com 20 things you probably didn't know about death. He lopped off one of the items. He paraphrased the rest of the items and then uh, posted it to their website. But the, here's where the magic came in. He had power user accounts on Dig. Dig was the Reddit of the day. And once he got this article on page one for, um, or, uh, on, on the first page for, uh, for Dig, it got tons of traffic, tons of links, and his client went from nowhere for life insurance to page one. And it wasn't this article, it was the home page. So Google, Bing, and Yahoo ranked him on page one, this tiny little insurance brokerage with fewer than a dozen employees for years for the term life insurance, right up there with Geico, uh, State Farm, and MetLife. Yeah. So one of these secrets is the remarkable purple cow type content. Another one is the power users, in this case, a Dig power user, but that's no longer relevant because Dig is not relevant anymore. Reddit, on the other hand, super relevant. It's the front page of the internet. And I have a power user who works for me who is in the Century Club. Does anyone know what the Century Club is? No? Okay. Anyone know what the main metric is for uh, your authoritativeness on Reddit? Anyone? Bueller? What? <laughs> karma. Who said karma? You get a book. Did you get a book already? You're going to get a book. <laughs> okay, pass it back. Awesome. So post karma and comment karma, and the one that matters the most is post karma. She's in the Century Club, meaning she has over 100,000 post karma points. She's a major influencer on Reddit. And guess how I found her? On Reddit, no, but that's a good guess. Tony Robbins? Nope, not Tony Robbins. Another good guess. Upwork? Upwork. Nope. <laughs> Craigslist. I found her on Craigslist. Pretty incredible. I found Pinterest power users on Craigslist. I found amazing uh, people on Craigslist. Viral content writers. It's a gold mine if you know how to write amazing ads. I put riddles in them, all sorts of crazy stuff. So get these power users on your payroll or like bribe them with like gifts and, and shower them with, uh, with praise and so forth. It's called uh, ego bait. And get them to do stuff for you. Like this is an example from a past client, overnightprints.com. Anyone heard of Shoe Money, Jeremy Shoemaker? Yeah? Yeah, big internet celebrity, internet marketer, famous for holding up a six-figure check from Google back in, way back in the early days of AdSense. So I knew that he didn't love his business card. I knew he loved his logo, which is a Superman S uh, logo thing with a dollar sign. He's got it on the bottom of his pool and everything. But he didn't love his logo, I mean his, uh, his business card, just his logo. So I came to him with this idea that I dreamed up for my client, Overnight Prints, which prints business card and letterhead and stationery, saying, what if we ran a contest to design you a new business card, like an amazing one, and uh, you help me promote it, and we kind of run it on, on your blog. But the contest itself lives on overnightprints.com. He's like, I'm in. This sounds great. He promoted it on his YouTube channel, on his blog, et cetera. And my client went from nowhere for business cards, like sub page 10 for business cards, their primary money keyword they were after, to number two. Boo yeah. <laughs> so there, there's the evidence. This is an old campaign, but they stayed there for years. So a quick case study that's relevant to today. Uh, another client in the room, Amino Active. Where are you guys? Yep, and yep. Okay, so Amino Active, Max's and Maxine's brands of, of uh, supplements for bodybuilders. This is just a regular staple piece of content on their site, a blog post that's not bad. But it's like meat and potatoes. It's not going to be the viral content piece that you need to spread far and wide. It has a cute headline. 
grass-fed versus grain-fed uh, the better way. That's kind of cute, but it's not, it, it, it doesn't have the magic, the, the remarkability, the purple cow factor. If you scroll, you'll see it's just a lot of text with no images. Now, here's a piece that my content team had produced. Uh, John did a fabulous job. This headline is, uh, like, I've created a whole link building strategy uh, with dozens and dozens and dozens of these um, ideas in here. This is one of them. The 10 worst workout fads of all time, which sounds pretty smart. But then you start digging into the content and you think, wow, this is genius. That's the shake weight. If you read the pros, we don't have time to, but it's awesome. I mean, this guy is an incredible writer. So how good are your links? No? Not great? Okay. Next and finally, the content of... Oh, that didn't... Uh, okay, so there's supposed to be three. Are there popular... Keywords are supposed to be popular, they're supposed to be relevant, and they're supposed to be attainable. Those are the three key factors to make a keyword a good keyword. And then there are the wrong keywords. Here's an example from your part of the world. Uh, Westpac was a client for a while back in the day, and uh, their legal department insisted they don't use the term mortgage anywhere on the website. Genius, right? Legal department equals business prevention department. <laughs> so without being able to use the term mortgage, they had to use the term home loan, but nobody searches for home loans. Like nobody. It's crickets. It's nothing. So that's not good. Uh, then we have another example here, which is from Kohl's department stores in the States, another client who insisted on ranking for Kitchen Electrics, but Kitchen Electrics is not something that anybody ever uses in their common vernacular. Well, I don't even know what a Kitchen, well, I do know what a Kitchen Electric is now, but nobody, who knows what a Kitchen Electric is? Yeah, exactly. It's a small kitchen appliance, like a toaster or a food processor. Everybody's searching for kitchen appliances, on the other hand. And then you guys are doing the same thing. So, um, hello again. <laughs> I'm not sure what a stargazer is, or a star blazer, or a superstar, or a shooting star, but you probably don't want those searchers who are searching for those things, even if they are searching. Like, the, the volumes would be pretty small, and they're not your... I love you. <laughs> James, is she a plant? <laughs> Free ticket every year. Every year. Yeah, it's, I mean, it's not, it's, it's not your target audience. <laughs> and then we have doorway pages. So that happens if you're trying to target a keyword and um, you don't really have any unique content, so you just replicate the same content. So it's duplicate content, and it's not meant to be a valuable page, really. So here, this is Endurance. Who's Endurance? Where's Endurance Treadmills? Hello. Okay. So you have treadmills uh, for sale. What is this targeting? Treadmill. Treadmills for sale Adelaide, we have treadmills for sale Brisbane, we have treadmills for sale Canberra, and it's all the same content. And it goes on and on and on, all these different cities, and they're all linked from the footer site-wide. That looks like spam, and I, I think you're probably getting penalized by Google. You've got to stop it. So don't do that. Now I'm going to show you real quick a few different tools. Uh, this is Suval. Who's used Suval, anyone? Nobody? Oh my god, this is such a cool tool. Have you used it? One person. Check this out. As you start typing your keystrokes, it will auto-complete. So watch, I'm going to start typing in SEO, and it's auto-completing not just from Google, but also Bing, Yahoo, YouTube, Wikipedia, Answers.com, and Amazon all simultaneously. And these are all clickable, and they go directly to the search results of that particular search engine. Isn't that awesome? So this is great for keyword brainstorming. Next, we have Answer the Public, which you've already heard a couple times, but here I'm going to show you how to use it. So we're going to type in SEO into this tool, and this guy starts getting really impatient. He starts picking his teeth and stuff if you take too long. So he's like, uh, come on, guy, hurry up. All right, 
So here we go. And guess where this data comes from for this particular tool? Anyone know? Google. OK. Can we be more specific? <laughs> Nope, not Google Keyword Planner. Google, who said Google Suggest? James, you get a book. <laughs> so see how this tool, uh, yeah, you actually already have one, I think. So see how this tool works is it extracts all these Google Suggest suggestions that are questions, who, what, why, when, where, et cetera, implied questions, uh, things like prepositions and stuff in, near, for, that sort of thing. And then you can uh, switch to the tab view. And I mean, the, the pretty kind of uh, graphical view is nice, but I don't want to crank my head to see the results. So that's a great free tool. Answerthepublic.com. You all should use it. And then you got all these great questions that you can uh, should probably check to make sure that there's volume for these keywords. But it's great fodder for FAQ pages. Is um, uh, this website owner still here? She had to leave. She had to leave. OK. But uh, suffice it to say that she's got an issue with her FAQs page, which is, first of all, living on Help Scout instead of on her own site. And it's essentially a, you know, like an error page. So then we got Search Metrics Topic Explorer. This one is an expensive tool, but well worth it. It's amazing. Watch how this one works. It creates these topic clusters. So not just keywords, but actual topics. Google refers to them as entities. But topics include multiple keywords. In this case, I put avocado in, and it gave me all these different related things like jackfruit and avocado toast and everything like that. And then I can switch the views to see these by seasonality, by competitiveness, by um, uh, semantic associations. Isn't that awesome? And they're color coded by those. So that is another great tool. Then we have Google Trends, free. I mentioned it already when I showed you, you know, home loans versus uh, mortgages and all that. Let me show you how that works. You put in your keywords uh, separated by commas. In this case, I'm going to compare laptop and laptops. And look at that. Laptop, singular, is way, way more popular than the plural. You might think, oh, I'm gonna, I want to rank for laptops. No, you don't. You want to rank for laptop. That's where all the volume is. And then there's this kind of hidden feature that's hidden in plain sight that I love. It's part of this tool. It, um, here, let me uh, show you. Under web search, one of the options is YouTube search. I don't know of any other tool that gives you YouTube-specific search behavior. I mean, other than, obviously, YouTube Suggest. Isn't that awesome? So I can compare and contrast people's behavior on YouTube, the number two search engine, versus on Google. And then we have Moz Keyword Explorer. There's so many features in this that are amazing. Let me just show you one real quick. I'll put in uh, SEO as the keyword. And then I'm going to choose as the option here our questions instead of the default, which is a mix of sources. Now I'm getting questions back that are very similar to the, to the um, answer the public tool. And then finally, SEMrush. Look at this. This is, this is the coup de grace right here. You put in a competitor's domain. In this case, I'll put Moz.com, not really a competitor, he's an actual friend and co-author on the first two editions of The Art of SEO, uh, Rand Fishkin. But I put in Moz.com, and then I go to the organic research uh, tab, and then that shows he's got hundreds of thousands of keywords, or the company has hundreds of thousands, like 200 and some thousand keywords that they rank in Google for. And then I switch to uh, click on that link that says Featured Snippets. So it filters to Featured Snippets only instead of all, like 200,000. Now I'm getting down to 9,000 keywords where they have position zero. That's what position zero looks like. It preempts the first organic listing, and that's money right there. If you can have a Featured Snippet, you are the voice search answer. Somebody says, OK, Google, or hey, Google, you know, tell me whatever. 
and you get an answer back and you're the featured snippet, that's your text from your website. That voice search is the future and featured snippets is your gateway to that. Here's what you do, you go after your competitors' featured snippets, first you download them all, like I just showed you, and then you identify the ones that are weak, that are in the wrong format, so like it's a how-to query, and they have a paragraph snippet, and really the best kind of format is a numbered list for a how-to, like how to boil an egg, one, two, three, right? And you see your competitor has a paragraph, like I'm gonna go in with a numbered list, okay? So that is an incredible opportunity. And then finally, I know I I'm, I'm, uh, need to wrap up here, EAT stands for Expertise, Authoritativeness, and Trustworthiness. I'm gonna compare two doctors here. One doesn't have it. This guy it just has a very pretty website with a nice looking office, and there's no credibility there. I don't see all the as seen on logos, I don't see his degrees and all, like, this doesn't look legit. And then the com competition here, well, it's a, just another uh, doctor, but he's a celebrity doctor, or dentist, actually. He's got all these logos. He's been on Extreme Makeover, on um, Larry King Live, at, and he's got a New York Times bestseller. This guy is the bomb, and he's also got celebrity clients like Katy Perry. So these are sites that need more eats. Mary uh, Maker Sisters, uh, Neoprene Bags, and there's your free money. So thank you very much. And there's my email. Thank you. If you, are, uh, if you see me, I'm gonna be around till tomorrow morning and you want me to rip apart your website in a gentle way, I'll sit down with you for like 10 or 15 minutes and I'll take as many of you as you want. Just find me, I'll be around. Or if we don't have time, just email me and I'll do it over Skype or, or Zoom with you. Thank you very much. Wow, well, thank you so much, Stefan. <laughs> Impressive. I know how hard you worked on that presentation. Yep, yep. Like he had to take your inputs and then customize this whole presentation just for this audience and that that's the detail is appreciated. Thank, thank you. you. <laughs>